All right, and we're live. So today is October 17th. Tomorrow is October 18th, 2019. It is a Friday. We've had earnings for the week. The outlook has been interesting. And let's get into it. Montesir, you're here again with me. So let's let's get into this. So Hey, guys. I'm back. Yes. And we will be talking about a ton of stuff, a ton of players. Yeah. We're ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got, I got a pretty big list on here. So firstly, let's go over what we talked about yesterday. So... We did, firstly, Netflix, we wanted to sell some credit spreads. Obviously, you know, be us being us, we, we didn't do that. But it was very easy because of how, you know, behavior was in the previous uh, fiscal year. So this was a fairly easy, you know, find that it was going to come back the way it was, especially from the actual news regarding subscriber growth. Um, you know, th there was some serious IV, so obviously the move was going to be huge. Came back down. I mean, it went up what, ten percent, and then it came back down. It came back down like nine percent. So it came back almost back to where we started or ended the day yesterday, which is kind of funny. We're off by like six dollars. So, so yeah, Netflix. Netflix was probably the easiest thing in the goddamn world. Funny enough, you did play it, didn't you? You bought it at two ninety two. And then you played it up till, not even that high. You played it up to like two ninety four, two ninety five, right? Right. Yeah. If you look at the, uh, the like first two hours. Yeah. That that huge wick on the third bar. Yeah. And that's that's the bounce that I played. Oh, this like from two yeah. two eighty nine to two ninety two. Yeah, two eighty nine to two ninety two. Yeah. You you what did you make? You made like twenty percent on that or something. Yeah. 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 So that was yeah. that was that was a pretty easy, and it went even further. It went up. Uh, it went up a hundred percent, right, from from the bottom right. to the top. So you put in five hundred, yeah. and you traded it up till up till there. You made a hundred dollars on that, and then it played up, went up five times that. Right. All right. Yeah. So that's that's definitely one. Another thing that we said that yesterday that the spy was probably going to be really volatile today, and it was probably going to come down. Well, if you look at the charts, you can see that we did come down a bit from 299, which makes sense because, you know, 300 is a pretty strong level for just the market in general. And so we did, we hit the, we hit 300 in the pre-market. Actually, no, we didn't. We hit pre-market, uh, I think opening. Yeah, we hit, hit 300 opening and then we came all the way back down and then we kind of went back up and around. So the October volatility is still here. It's ridiculous. AMD looks exactly like this actually. Not exactly. It actually moved it differently. So it opened up, it opened up, and then it came like right back down. I think to to close yesterday, uh, close to close. Actually, it was a little bit above it, and uh, then it came around. So I, I do have some ideas on AMD, but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. Um, so okay. So another thing that we said was that uh, Roku would break down 133, and God, yeah, it did. So. Yeah, this doesn't look like it, but in the beginning, what happened was at the market open, we broke right past into 133, and it tanked all the way down to, uh, what was it, 130, 129, that level right there, 129, 130 level, right? Right. And then after that, we broke up back to 133, and then after that, it kind of just skyrocketed. We played it at 135 to what? 135 to 136, right? Right. One, yeah, 135.8. Is when we got out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What was what was our margin on that? What how much did we make? We made twenty dollars. Twenty no no percentage. Two hundred right so about ten percent. Okay okay so ten percent on that that was okay that was an okay move I mean the whole thing overall only it went up a hundred total right it went so up a hundred percent hundred percent from there to there. Yeah right so yeah that was a fairly cheap that was a. Yeah, that, that itself wasn't a fantastic move because just getting 10% out of that isn't too hot. The whole thing was decent, though. Um, so that was pretty pretty strong. And then we also said Tesla would probably be breaking down today. Um, that we kind of did see that Tesla opened breaking down, came uh, came down to two, 260, which is a level that I reset today um, for, for my watch list tomorrow. And... We, we have some really strong wicking on the bottom, so there's a lot of buying pressure. But you can see that when we actually opened up, we started up really high because we hit 264. A shit ton of buying, uh, selling pressure kicked in. Uh, we pushed, it pushed the stock way back down, down to 260, and then it held back up and kind of stayed around that level, right? 
Right. And then, actually, I never got, we never got to check what was going on with NVIDIA, but what I wanted to do, and this kind of screwed me because I got, I got uh, crapped out on a fill, but basically around 193, 90, yeah, about 90, high 93, or mid 93, I wanted to uh, buy a... I wanted to open a iron condor on this because I figured it would be between uh, 195 and one uh, 192.5, and that it did. It came down past 192.5, but then it pulled all the way back into 194. So it is moving around this area. If it closes in this area, then that iron condor will credit about 130 bucks. But I'm not in it, so uh, yeah, that we'll have to see on that one. But. So those are those are what we did today. I actually there is one more thing that I did today. Around so UNH had been uh, UNH had earnings on the fifteenth, so two days ago, and it had been right. running. It had been running for these last three days, including today. So it ran on the fifteenth. Ran on uh, it didn't really run on the on the sixteenth, but on the seventeenth it continued. So. Uh, what I, I figured is probably going to take a break and, you know, it's hitting, it's hitting the, uh, high SMA. So I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to play the, uh, play against it, see if it would stay below that 245 level. So I have a credit spread against the 245. So, um, so at close, we did see that it went really close to 245 and then it tanked down, uh, came back up a little bit, tanked down again. And then when we closed, there were some really crazy orders. Some people got filled at 240. Uh, it was, I was pretty excited about that, and then it kind of came right back. So we closed. We closed where we. Uh, we are currently at where we closed. So nothing has really changed as far as UNH is considered. Uh, we'll have to watch the morning price action to see how I should how I should consider this play. Um, yeah. So now, now we have a list of other things that we want to do. So my UNH credit spread I just covered, um, and then I said, all right, so go to Tesla. Okay. All right. So, so what I'm saying, if you look at the, if you look at the daily chart for Tesla, you can see that we just crossed above the uh, the SMAs. Um, it is possible that we're and we're kind of a doji at the top of a of a trend. So you know that's that that pattern tends to work out okay. Um, I figure that probably. Will probably come down a bit, probably not down to 250, but at least back to the uh, close from the uh, the 16th, so 259. We might actually come back down. We'll probably settle around there, but I think that we'll probably come back down to like 256 and then come back up if we break right. 260. So 260 is those are those two edges. So 262 if we want to break up, 263 if we really want to break up, and then uh, break down is about 260 exactly. That's when we'll definitely see like downward price movement, and so so we'll see. I think we'll see for us to figure that out. We'll see some uh, some higher, a little bit of higher volume in the I think pre and after market. So after market we're not really getting much, but pre market we'll probably either see see it happen or we won't. There is a piece of news. I think I sent it to you um, that Tesla has increased the price of the the Model Three. Mm -hmm. So it is costing a little bit more. It's not. I, it's very small. I think it's about a thousand dollars. And I think it goes about ten miles further, but okay. regardless, that's kind of a. I don't. I don't know. I don't know about the market. How the market would be interpreting something like that. Yeah. Uh, I could say that maybe they would th think it's pretty uh, negative in terms of news, but we'll have to see kind of how the market digests that. If you go back to the Tesla Daily, you can see actually the TTM squeeze happened a few days ago. Yeah, I see. It's on mine. Is it, and, does it work? Uh, this, one, this one is longer than the usual spurts of just one red, right? Mm -hmm. It was a longer session of, of red dots. Yeah. If you look at the previous red dot sort of session, which was in... Yeah, um, I see it. The 12th. November. No, yeah. or December. December and November, yeah. So December... And those two times... So that one, it was a long, long one and... Completely crashed. It completely went down, except it didn't open up at the right. Like it didn't open up red after it turned from red to green. Mm, so it, so, so, so it's like a fake so, out. Yeah, yeah. So we can't really trust that one. I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't know so far as to do this. I mean, one of the biggest plays that we've been missing this whole time has been fucking Amazon <laughs> for uh, for you know this this entire cup. I mean, yeah. I think we got some more movements on it. I'm just saying that like I'm annoyed because I've been I've been talking about it for so long. 
um, I I should have devised some sort of strategy to play Amazon. Right. So uh, I think I'll I'll do that definitely um, when I can come home with something. So we will see how I'm going to end up doing that. But I'll probably think about it tomorrow based on tomorrow's price action. So that is important. We did cross above this SMA and we fell below it. So we opened above the SMA and then we fell below it and we took support on that. So if you look at it in that way. So we're closed right above the high of the previous day. Um, so, I mean, I guess I guess on that, as far as this goes, we'll have to just kind of see how Amazon keeps going. If the TTM actually does work. It, so far, it's starting to look exactly how I kind of expected. So, so that is kind of cool to see. It is cool to see that the TTM might actually work. You know, so it comes up and then it comes like down and then it swoops way the hell up. So that's my hope now. And and that makes sense, actually, because this kind of this kind of lines up pretty well with what we're kind of expecting to see as far as the market goes, because um, because of, you know, this the, the trade war news the which is not great right now, but the currency, the currency deal is great. And so we'll probably see a rally there and then, you know, and in tandem with these earnings. And as long as the earnings remain to be good, uh, we'll probably see some pretty good, uh, you know, some rallying coming up actually. And yeah. yeah, so assuming that happens, then, you know, we'll probably actually get to play these really big. And that that's the goal is to play these very, very strongly in a way that, you know, we keep our money, but we make more like really in a, in a really good way, in a sustainable way. Because, you know, if we're playing mm -hmm. naked positions all the time, it's going to, you know, the like today would crush us out just with the IV on its own. So, so that wouldn't have been great. I mean, we did move up quite a bit though. Yeah. Kind of. This volatility is ridiculous because if you look actually at it, uh, if you look at the ninth, and if you look at the ninth on uh, Amazon, if you look at the ninth on Amazon, where are you? If you look at the ninth on Amazon, we're at like seventeen thirty three thirteen, and we only moved up about a hundred over the course of like. What it's the seventeenth now, so almost eight days, eight days, seven bars. So that's kind of not a lot, and as far as 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 far as Amazon goes, that's mm -hmm. not that's not too uh, fantastic actually. So you know that is I mean that's kind of concerning to me obviously, um, but if you look at the actually go to Amazon go to Amazon's uh, weekly. Okay. Uh, the weekly. The weekly chart for Amazon looks actually pretty decent. I mean, it still looks like it's kind of in a downtrend, but if the TTM plays the the game the right way and you know everything kind of lines up the way that we think it should, you know, these next the, the following week should actually be really good. And I might actually just just kind of as a YOLO, I might actually just take a a, a small Amazon bet that'll go back to like two thousand over the course of the next like two weeks. So maybe I'll I'll do something about that. Um, yeah, so as far as Amazon goes, I mean, Amazon's not a miss necessarily, but it's definitely, you know, it's pricing in something. So we are seeing that upward movement on not just Amazon, but many stocks. And then, uh, um, so we want to be able to kind of interpret that as it is. So AMD, for example, AMD's got some really stronger price movement. If you look at the weekly on AMD, uh, you see, you see a much better trend. And that's actually what I like. I like being able to just buy these week, these week outs and just completely, hold those for basically whatever percentage. So what I, what we did before I think was calculating the average movement of a week. And then with that information, we would just buy a, a an appropriate weekly, something that would possibly land in the money. Right. And that was, that was a fairly effective uh, method of doing so. So, and then, and then on top of that, next week's earnings are going to be even bigger. We got way more earnings this coming week. So that's really good. Um, yeah, next week is going to be all day big, big uh, companies. For sure. Apple, Amazon, AMD, all these. Mm -hmm. So uh, AMD is playing on the is on the twenty fifth. So okay. that's so that'll be so that'll be something really good. Now, hey, can, uh, take a look at uh, Intel. So so today Intel got rejected by the gap again. It it closed on it. So the gap is set at what okay what did you have the gap set for it's technically 53.4 52 well i got it on 52.79 but kind of the same ish so at open we more or less got rejected at 53 and then we came all the way down from there okay. so 
So that is that is interesting because I think that tomorrow it'll be a pretty easy catch. So Intel came down really hard, and and that I think is pretty interesting. So you could have uh, sold credit spreads at the bottom of this, um, but I think also I think Intel would be a pretty easy uh, play all the way all the way back up to um, what do you call it to fifty three. I actually, I think that it's possible that a, uh, Intel would do that. If the price action permits, if the, if the morning kind of shows off that way, I think it could uh, take off that way. So, so Intel is kind of on my list of uh, things to push to the wall. You get in kind of early on the downtrend and then you, you, run up, you run up some in the money calls and just you keep playing those over and over again. So this isn't necessarily going to, you're not, not necessarily pushed to the wall because I don't know about what what's going to happen once it hits the money again, once it gets in the money, but I know that you can actually catch a lot from just tomorrow's uh, striking movements. So that's what I'm kind of expecting is that it'll recover today's uh, downfall because it took support above 51.84, which is the uh, the EMA. So it's taking support on that, and it bounced off 51.38 above 50, so above the current SMA or the EMA, and I think it probably will bounce up. May, if not the full 53, at least half of the current thing. And that that is a quick and easy, I think, play to make there. That's solid, yeah. Yeah. And now and I got another one. So another play that I... Then, so these are the only things that I really want to look at uh, tomorrow because we look at way too many. So UAL reported, uh, they reported, and they, and they beat it, and then they gapped up the, the, the next day. But it looks like it's possible if you look at UAL, UAL look at the UAL uh, intraday, not intraday, sorry, daily chart. I think you'll see that you know it's it's very close to ninety, which has kind of been a a, a bounce off point for it for quite a while now. Like off the off the smaller mountain hill bumps. I don't know what to call this because this is just so ridiculously you know sideways. Yeah. I've just I've never seen a stock like this. So. It's so ridiculously sideways that you can kind of just, I don't know, you could just kind of YOLO a downward on this. I mean, that's not that's not wise because that's not a good way to stay solvent. So you watch the price action and then you watch the turnaround to see if it actually permits a play like that. But, you know, based on tomorrow's price action, I would say probably, you know, if we open up, so if I set these levels right now. Um, so right now we're 89.93. I'd say if you break 89, 88.90 or 89 just period, uh, you know, you could probably play that down and then you could play it down probably to 88, 88 flat or even further to 88, seven, you know, depending on how, what kind of day we have tomorrow. But right. so those are the levels and, and, you know, there's obviously the possibility because, you know, they beat earnings, so they should be getting good news. They should probably pull them out of the range, but if it doesn't pull them out of the range, then we're going to stay in it again and we're going to come back down and we're going to just keep playing around this range. So. Based on that information, I wanna I wanna kind of play it in that regard. So you know, if it's coming down, let's 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 follow that. Um, so watching, I think watching UAL after about eighty nine flat, I think is a good place. I think eighty nine flat yeah. is a good support for it to break through if it does. Um, and then if it doesn't, you know, if it if it starts to break up, I would say it would have to break almost ninety in order for us to really uh, cons be bullish on stock on this stock right now. So right. and tomorrow's Friday and tomorrow's a selling off day and so that's probably ninety one if you really want to get calls on this. Yeah, longer term yeah. calls like a week out. Like if I want to buy a week, week or two out, I would definitely have to go up to ninety one. Yeah. So we'll have to see, and this is something we'll definitely have to watch. But yeah, I think I think UAL is very interesting in that way. But but as far as I'm concerned, I actually think a credit spread against ninety would be pretty solid. What are you thinking? I'm thinking maybe debit spreads um, for the longer term calls or puts. And On UAL. I in quantity. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I don't. I don't think debit spreads are a good idea the, until the price action says it's bullish. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when it does hit those. Two yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, as far as long as like tomorrow's downward. As, if if tomorrow's downward is kind of confirmed as it breaks underneath, uh, you know, eighty nine, uh, breaks eighty nine, then I would probably say, uh, selling uh, the credit spread, right? Uh, 
sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. You could disagree. I don't. I mean, I can't. I can't say I'm bullish on this yet, though, because it's not. Um, you know, it's not. Uh, it it it's followed this pattern for too long. So I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to break out of a pattern to be a maverick here. I don't know if necessarily it's going to break above it. So yeah, I mean, you can play it both ways, like literally, like a condor. Right. Well, like, no, not a condor, but whichever direction it goes, play that way. You know, 91, 89, those two even levels. And then if it goes even further than that, long terms, like I'm looking at the options right now. Mm -hmm. um, the debit spreads on the 80 puts, you know, you could do a 10 cent difference in the buy time limit and watch the spread increase. So right, so but, that's, but that's only if you're, 50. I don't, that's only if you're right. And that's my concern is, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not too keen on on uh, UAL breaking out of its trend in any dramatic way just yet. I mean, we'd have to really see it break that with volume, and we're not. We're I'm not, not saying for the call sign. I'm saying for either way. Like even if you do the eighty, it's the same way. Oh, like, like puts, puts the instead same. of instead of credit spreads. Yeah, yeah. Instead of credit spreads, mm -hmm. because you can play the. Um, the difference if if you are in the yeah right, yeah I understand course. how the I don't understand how the debit spreads work I'm just trying to think about like how I would consider this one. Um, so I'm saying you probably buy the put a debit debit spread on the eighty strike mm -hmm. if it breaks you know eighty nine or maybe even eighty eighty eight mm -hmm. if you want to still follow this continuous trend. How far out are you thinking? About a month out, so November twenty ninth. A it's month out. About a month that these things. If you look at the terms, it's a month. Okay. Yeah, five to... Yeah, I see it. Five to six. So, what is this one? Seven or two to three? Yep. Eleven to one? Yeah, Jesus. These are always a month. Good catch. I mean, but I, I don't think tomorrow is going to be decider either. Because, I mean, each... each I mean, you have to top, look at the tops too. Because whenever it reaches a top, you got... Yeah, nineteen days on that one on on the second on the second uh, climb, you got eleven fourteen days on the on the third, and I can't even read that one. Let me see. And then fourteen days on that one. So we would have to be up there for a little while before we could uh, really make a decision about it, because it doesn't turn around in a day. Yeah. So you would have to wait like two weeks. So tomorrow will not be a decider. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Yeah, sure. So you have to pick a price level that you would eventually execute on. Well, right? I guess I guess the reason I was saying a credit spread against is because either way a 90, 90 is still a level. So we could see a potential just down like a fall like a drop and then we could see it recover and that'll happen over the course of like you know two weeks but tomorrow at the very least i think if we were to just look at the price section in general we're dealing with a pretty big level of 90 if it doesn't break above 90 again then we're not going to see it uh we're not going to see it break above it tomorrow and we're not going to see okay. it and we might actually see it come back down so maybe it'll retest 90 and then come back down yeah it sounds like a solid plan uh, kind of, I mean, kind of. It's not that solid. We don't have the we don't have the levels. We don't have the specific things. So, so this is gonna be have to this is gonna have to be something that we uh, kind of examine uh, in in market. So because well, because I, you know I don't really trade UAL. So I mean I I don't like airlines that much, but I think that um, you know this this could be. I mean this stock is a little too predictable that it's like you should probably give it a try. So figure out what's going on and then you know how it's doing what. So that's what I'd like to do. So we'll see. Um, all right, I got a few more. So the other one is McDonald's. So McDonald's has been on a down run for for a little bit now. Uh, since the since the September 9th. it's kind of been down. Not not necessarily. It's like. Lower lows, not actually no, not lower lows. Kind of stagnant in the same area, uh, fluctuating between two seven, two fourteen. So we've been stuck in that area for some time now. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But it does you look... Think it's going to break this two or five? I radius? think so. I actually do think so. I think it might actually come back, come down off into 199 over the next uh, week and a half, I think. Uh, and and that, that's, that's actually interesting because this is diverging from the rest of the market. Uh, McDonald's is usually a, val- usually a value stock, and it's not today. It's not right now. So... Because you know the rest of the market's coming up, and McDonald's is not. So, so it is it is diverging from the market. So I do think that as this kind of starts to happen, we'll start seeing this come down as well. Okay. And so I, th- I think so. So we could probably open up a uh, debit spread on uh, McDonald's. That's that's what I'm going to be looking for tomorrow. And then uh, Baba. So Baba was kind of interesting. If you look at the intraday on Baba, I think that. Uh, the way that it just kind of dipped off today was really uh, was really drastic. And it was like it wasn't like an insane amount. It was like a percent and a half. But I think be, just based on the uh, the way these levels have been working out on this stock so far, I don't think it's going to necessarily turn around just yet. I think it's possible that Baba will um, come back to open. So so for example, so we were at. 70, uh, 178 today, we came all the way down to 176, so I think tomorrow we might actually open back up to uh, 178 or so. And, but that'll that'll only be if it doesn't break under 176, like, 3. So, those are the, those are things that I kind of want to see. So, we can only trade these on, so the, um, so the option chain on this will only trade on certain accounts, so we can't trade the October uh, 18th tomorrow. But on Baba, let's look at what these IV is. So the IV is probably out the money. Yeah, so the IV gets really, eh, it's pretty average uh, as far as the IV goes. So it's like around 22%. So, um, yeah, so I think I think that's a that's more of a, you know, here and there play. Like we'll have to read what the price action says tomorrow. Uh, but I do think that it's possible that uh, Baba might gap up to like 177 or so. Uh, hold at that area and then based on that it'll probably come back down a bit and then uh, swing back up to 178 I think that's a possibility of how tomorrow is gonna work out for this stock um, mm. I will have to see obviously if the market comes up if the because one of the more important things is if spy starts to retest 300 right because we hit 300 today and we were ex- extremely volatile and now um, you know now we're coming back down so and then if you looked at the VIX lately, the VIX has been just completely, we just completely fell off. We were at almost 20 and now we uh, came down over the last few weeks. So that's actually really interesting because it's not, this is the volatility isn't necessarily working out that way. Then again, the uh, this the VIX only mar- uh, covers the, the previous like 30 days of spy out the money just on how it, how it moves on that. So uh, I'll have to, I think, analyze the VIX a bit more as to what's going on, but the VIX has completely dipped off over the last, um, you know, since, since October 8th. Um, so yeah, I, I, what this means is I don't know because we are seeing some, some pretty strong volatility regardless as you've seen with SPY today. So we will, you know, have to keep, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to watch this and see how the market actually reacts to it because it's not doing that properly. It's not doing that how we expect. Uh, same thing with the TLT. The TLTs have been coming down, uh, and if you go check the futures, you know you can you can see that the futures are still pricing in an 85% uh, chance of a uh, of a rate cut. So so that that's definitely interesting. As the even as the markets start to rally, and then I think we might be headed into a rally depending on how these earnings go. Um, but yeah, as 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 far as we're concerned right now, though. Uh, I think what we have to look at tomorrow is the UNH spread, Tesla shorts, AMD, maybe. AMD is more of a hit and miss. I think Intel is a very easy play if if it um, if it does reattempt it the way that we think. And we should see the volume to back up the, uh, the, the retesting of the gap. And then UAL. UAL could be pretty easy. And then I think lastly, uh, Baba and McDonald's. So these are the things that I think are I'll, I'll be looking out for tomorrow. And just for my own benefit, I do want to see if NVIDIA kind of holds tomorrow's 194, 193 level. If it does, then my iron condor would, would work out and uh, I could probably do this again. Uh, for Roll it over or play it into the next week. 
probably in a different way at a different uh, level, but I think I think I kind of have an idea of where this stock is headed. All right. Is there anything? Is there anything that you think in? You want to take a look at Beyond? Yes, Beyond broke down, didn't it today? Yes. Yes. Didn't we said it yesterday, didn't we? Or yeah. did did you say it? Yeah. So yeah, that's on. We need a. I think we need to come up with a better system for keeping an eye on the stocks that we talk about. So maybe just a singular chart that only has the things that we we watch. So if it does something that we expect it to do, then it's not as surprising when it happens. Right, right. So, so there's a gap fill. You you mentioned that there's a gap fill from 120 to 102. One, yeah. Let me see. It was from 120 to yeah, 101, 10, 102. So if Beyond's coming down, we got a we got a big we got a big rundown. But Beyond is also uh, they have earnings soon. They have earnings on the 28th. So that would that's what I figured was gonna break it bring it down because I figured their earnings wouldn't be too great and it right. would bring them down into uh, into uh, into this older territory. However, um, maybe it'll sell off into the earnings. I think it's going to probably sell off into the earnings. That probably makes a little bit more sense. And uh, so then we also want to think about how they're going to perform on this earnings because on the previous earnings. They they were superior. They completely outperformed what we were expecting, and then you know the market jumped way the hell up, or beyond jumped way the hell up. Um, but in this in Q two, what we're expecting is I don't know. It's a bit different because now you know Beyond has penetrated quite a bit into um, into different markets, into you know they're in Burger King now. But how much how much money can this company make? Because they are, as many people have said, they're overvalued extremely so because they're not, their revenue is not a billion dollars. So they're not making enough to support the fact that they're that expensive. Mm -hmm. And so it do, it would make sense for, um, you know, the stock to start coming down back to 100, probably a more stable level. So it's possible, I think, that, you know, maybe Beyond might actually come back to uh, where it was before it completely took off. And yeah, so so that's what I'm thinking. What's really funny though is if you look at the earnings for, um, when was this? Yeah, if you look at the earnings for this July, they they beat expectations, I think, fairly fairly strongly. They beat it. How much did they beat it by? Yeah, yeah, they beat it fairly, they beat it really well, but they, um, it like completely came down afterwards. Yeah, it's just been on a downturn after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's that's what I'm thinking, and I think I think they're probably expecting a similar uh, a similar taste with eh, not pun intended, but I think they're expecting a similar taste with this coming uh, uh, earnings report. So it's probably going to sell off into that. Uh, you know, we'll we'll take support here and there, but there isn't really much. We're we're in that area that we've never. The stock has never been at this price, if that makes any sense. So the stock has never been 117. It has always been above it or below it. That's it. So so we are in some uncharted territory. That's cool. So that's really cool. No, it's, it's something. I'm not gonna say cool because I don't know how to trade that, but I'll figure it out. And you know, Apple's still at 235, so that's so that's good. You didn't roll those over, right? No, no, no. You 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 sold the legs and you made that up. So yeah, okay. So I think that's our watches for for. Um, Tomorrow, so then it's beyond. So I'll add that as well. Uh, B Y N D. So we we want to watch beyond McDonald's, Baba, UAL, Intel, Tesla, and UNH. Solid. Sure. Yeah. All Solid. right. Cool. All right. All right. That's it for today, guys. So we'll see you guys next time. And I think uh, someone requested that we do a video about why price action does matter. So. Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll show up in a different video then. Alright, thanks.